P3, topic 5, kinetic theory and gases. Kinetic theory is really just the ideas about how particles move in the three different states of matter, so basically year 7 stuff. In a solid, the particles are held together by strong bonds, they can't move out of their fixed position, is all they can do is vibrate. As it turns into a liquid, the bonds get weaker and that allows the particles to move around each other. In a gas, the particles are totally free, they move randomly in all directions. They will move to fill up the container they're in, but because there's a lot of space between them, it means that gases are very compressible. We can change the volume that they're in. Gases cause a pressure. The pressure is the force that they exert on the walls of the container. They move around the container, colliding with the walls, exert a force on that area, that is pressure. The faster the particles move, they'll collide more often with the walls of the container and there will be more pressure. Pressure is measured in pascals. Temperature. Temperature is a measure of how much energy something has. Lower down the school we might have talked about it as heat energy, but actually it's just how much kinetic energy the particles have. So as we increase the temperature, the particles get more kinetic energy. This is actually a directly proportional relationship. It's a straight line graph passing through the origin. Directly proportional also means that as you double one thing, you double the other, or as you halve one thing, you halve the other. As this graph shows, there is a coldest temperature that is possible, zero degrees Kelvin. That's called absolute zero. At this temperature, the particles have no kinetic energy, which means theoretically they're not moving at all. I just referred to temperature in Kelvin, that is the standard unit for temperature, so when we're using equations we need to ensure our temperature is in Kelvin. On a day-to-day -day basis we tend to use degrees C. The Kelvin scale starts with the coldest temperature is zero and works up from there. The Celsius scale came about when um, zero was described as the freezing point of water, so we just need to trace back from there to find out what absolute zero would be in Celsius. In actual fact, it's minus 273. So if you want to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, is all you have to do is add on 273. So zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. These ideas that we've been talking about, pressure, temperature and volume, are linked by a set of equations called the gas law equations. You don't need to learn these, they're all given to you on the exam. But they just give us an idea of what happens if I have a bit of gas and I change its volume, what would happen to its pressure? Or if I had a bit of gas and I heated it up, what would happen to its volume? So you just need to be quite good at using these because they will come up on your exam. So for example, um, a container of volume 20 meters cubed contains a gas at temperature 10 degrees C, it is released into the air at room temperature, what volume does it have? I always start by drawing the two situations, not some kind of artistic drawing, just a very simple one. So my first situation is the gas in the container, the second situation is the same gas released into the air. Write on the information that you know. I know the volume and the temperature beforehand, I don't know the volume in the air but I do know the temperature. This enables me to select the correct equation, which is the one that involves volume and temperature. Do be careful with these, that temperature needs to be in Kelvin. Then it's just a case of working through as you would with your standard calculations.